Hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Welcome to another edition of Courtside with Christy and Gabe right here on the Her Hoop Sets Podcast Network. I am Christy Winter Scott, joined as always by my guy, Gabe Ibrahim, and we are going to chop it up all things women's hoops today, starting with WNBA free agency. It's at the tip of everyone's tongue. We are all intrigued, Gabe, about where these players may move. And we got, so I, we say it every week. We say it every week. There's so much happening. And this week, I think it's finally coming to a head. Like we are finally, like it'll be this week and next week. Everything's going to happen all at once. Um, and we may have to split up this podcast just if, in case you're watching on our YouTube channel or listening to us on a podcast feed. We hope you subscribe to the channel and make sure you're following us on Twitter at HerHoopStats and subscribe to our, subs- our newsletter, HerHoopStats at Subsect.com. This will be the intro for both of them because I don't want to record two intros. So yeah, that works. If there's, if there's two videos, this is what's starting it. So we are starting with whatever is in the title of the video. <laughs> uh, but for the real podcast, for our, our, true, our true audio heads, yeah, we got to get into free agency because it went crazy as soon as we got off air last week. Uh, we got we talked on Wednesday and then it mm-hmm. went crazy. So I want to get into all these reports. First thing I want to say, though, is like these reports are coming from Christina Williams, Chantal Jennings, Rachel Galligan, Winsider, B. Terrell, Women's Basketball 24-7. I say that at the top because it's going to get very tedious for me to say that after <laughs> each report. Um, right. And they are doing great work. So go follow them for all the free agency news. All right, let's start the talk. (laughs) Okay. Brianna Stewart took a meeting with the New York Liberty. She sure did. Uh, That's a big deal because she is an unrestricted free agency. I'll decide to use their core on Jewel Lloyd. And now Brianna Stewart has taken a meeting with at least one other team. We haven't heard any more reports of her taking other meetings. And it seems like she's actually seriously considering leaving Seattle Mm. Christy what was your reaction to this I was shocked by that because I just thought you know she has a new family a new baby uh, you know I just thought that she wanted to stay Mm -hmm. in Seattle even though they didn't core her I just thought that she's like well that's all right I'm gonna stay but New York Sandy Brondello is the new coach there I mean they have a young team Mm -hmm. of whippersnappers up there (laughs) (laughs) I just think that, you know, at first I was surprised, but then I was like, I can see the reasoning behind her wanting to do that. Yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Like yeah. I was just saying, when you when you think about it, because well, first off, Brianna Stewart's from Syracuse. So right. her she I think uh, I'm not sure. I think her family moved with her to Seattle. Her parents did. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. she still has ties to the region. Obviously, that's sure. going to be attractive to anyone. Um, right. Her, her wife's family lives in Spain, which uh, if you look at a globe, you'll see that Spain is closer to New York as well. So that there, there is a lot of ties there that make New York attractive. And I think the biggest thing that makes New York attractive though is what you're saying, winning not only this year, but going into the future with Sabrina Inescu, Natasha Howard, this uh, Sammy Whitcomb, you know, it could go down the list of the whole roster in New York, but it's a team that has a lot of potential. And I think, right. Tell me if you agree with this. I think they have a little bit more potential long-term than Seattle does. Cause you look at Seattle's roster. Yeah. Sue's coming back for one more year. Uh, allegedly this is her last year, but we'll see about mm-hmm. that. But yeah, one, know. yeah one, one year is what they're right. saying. Right. So, Sue comes back for one year. Jewel is probably coming back cause she's under the core designation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like radio silence on Jewel Lloyd as well. Haven't heard anything about what nothing, she's doing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And she can mm-hmm. like if you recall last year, like Neka Gumake took meetings despite being of the core designation because the right. sparks allowed her to. Right. So I don't I don't know if Jewel Lloyd's doing that. But regardless, you look down the roster though, who are those next players coming up that are going to be a championship team around Brianna Stewart if she stays in Seattle long term? So I think New York's really, really an attractive place for her for all those reasons right. and i yep. could i could see it happening i could you see it happening or are you still like she's going she's going back no i i can see it happening just for what you said too just you know the long-term big picture mm-hmm. in new york 
make sense. Like that's what I was talking about. Like the reasoning behind it is that. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's looking long term. She's looking, you know, where can I be a, a, a an invaluable piece of experience for a young team? I mean, she's already well known with you know Natasha Howard. Like she has ties with players, you know, who are mm-hmm. formerly in Seattle. So I don't know. I just think it would be. It would be very intriguing to see what that would look like with all of them on the floor too. I think I would like to see that, just see what it would look like. <laughs> but I think it it's was- like, all right, we're going to finally, we're going to really figure out if Sabrina <laughs> Nescu is a new super. I don't know if you were going to say that. But. Yeah, no, I mean, along those lines, but yeah, I want to see what that would look like. Like would, would Sabrina take, take a step back or forward? Probably both, right? It depends. It depends what you expect from her. I expect her to be more of the facilitator type of okay. player. I think we talked okay. about this in the past. Like she's at her best when yeah. she is facilitating. Yeah. Um, she needs to find. She needs to find their way to the basket a little bit more often. And right. you know, I think staying healthy is a huge is going to be is a huge issue. But major, major. I I'd love to see her as more of the facilitator. And she had. If you put talent around these players, obviously they can all coexist. I think there is a little bit of concern because Natasha Howard did leave Seattle to come to New York. And, you know, I don't really know the reasons for that, but one would assume that part of the reason was for her to be kind of the, the MVP candidate on the team. And if you bring in Brianna Stewart, the best player in the world, that kind of changes the situation. So right. I, I don't know. I think it's, it's a huge, huge win for New York to even get this meeting, especially yeah. if there are no other meetings what a what a victory for right. New York to come from for, to to go from a franchise that was playing in a bad arena didn't really have all those LMA resources to now being this yeah. team that has the all the resources that a player could want and is so attractive to a ton of free agents so huge huge win for New York and kudos to to the whole team uh, from ownership down in New York I think they're building something special. Oh, absolutely. And I think that's what you have to look at, right? The, the potential. Mm-hmm. That's the word of the day with New York and the possibility of bringing in these unrestricted free agents like Brianna Stewart. Come on. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty amazing. And, and the other thing I want, I want to criticize Seattle quickly, because I look, I think Seattle uh, had to fit. I think they probably had a lot more intel on the situation than, than we did, right? So they, they probably saw it and said, hey, Jewel is more likely to go. They probably figured that if Sue comes back, Stewie's going to come back. But I think this is this is a major, uh, fi- not failure, but a mistake. I think letting Brianna Stewart take a different, take a meeting, see what another organization has to offer and mm-hmm. be out on the open market, like that creates a situation that even if she does come back for this year, you know, you've created something that maybe puts it in our mind, like, Hey, maybe there's something better out there for me. Maybe there's, maybe there's a different world that I want to see in the future. And now right. the, sec- the second thing that they've created is an issue with Jewel Lloyd's core designation. Cause right. at this point, let's say Brianna Stewart decides I'm coming back to Seattle for a year for a one year deal to play with super. And then we'll figure right. it out next year. Well, now if Jewel Lloyd signs a contract for more than this season, she will, they will not have the core designation to use on Brianna Stewart next year. Hence the problem of letting her get out into the exactly. market and see the world. She may say next year, Hey, I really liked what they, that they told me in New York, or I want to hear what they have to tell me in Washington or Minnesota or any of these places. And I think just like that is a, a mistake and something that could really be a big problem. Obviously if Stewie and Lloyd signed long contracts, it's not, but I, I'm, I'm a little worried for Seattle. Yeah, I, I am worried for Seattle. I mean, when Sue Bird said she was coming back, that was another surprise because at the end of the season, it did not look like that would be the case. But after, you know, thinking about it and and deciding that she wanted to go back through that grind, hey, that's on her. I love it, though. Yeah. I love it for her. But, you know, we're talking five years from now, right? Three mm-hmm. years from now. <laughs> like, what, what does... What does that look like for Jewel Lloyd? And what does that look like for Brianna Stewart? So, I mean, a lot of big decisions. And then ultimately, obviously, what does it look like for Seattle? <laughs> I, and I think that's that's the biggest question is, is what the team will look like. 
with with all those moving parts still up in the air. I mean, what 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 a turnaround it would be though for Seattle to go from championship in 2020 to losing Natasha Howard, Sammy Whitcomb, Alicia Clark, <laughs> Brianna Stewart, and then having Sue Bird retire. Like that is that's, that's about as quick as of a of a teardown as as we've seen. But it could work out. You never know. Like right. the, the Lloyd Bird and Stewie have not lost in the playoffs when they are healthy. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, but then, you know, if Brianna Stewart decides to go to New York, Howard, Whitcomb, Stewie, Sabrina. It solves all of the problems. Like it immediately solves every single issue that we that I have with New York. Right. It solves them. Like everyone falls into place. Everyone has their right position. The defense is gonna make a lot more sense. Uh, you know, they they have so much, they would have so much versatility. Yeah. I think we can wait until next week. I think we should wait until <laughs> next week really to talk about it. just to, I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's, it's just stressful. Gonna... No, it is stressful because you just don't know, and that's the yeah. thing. But I mean, the possibilities are very intriguing to say the least like I am like definitely eyes on and I think every WNBA fan has eyes on that decision by Stewie right it's it's uh everybody's watching that it's extremely exciting I think this is uh well we'll see what happens we'll see what happens I would still bet I'd still bet that she's going to Seattle um but the canary in the coal mine here might be (laughs) Steph Dolson right so if Steph Dolson decides before Brianna Stewart we have our canary in the coal mine situation because we will yeah. know because she, she has told says uh, uh, it was leaked or reported. I forget, but I think yeah. it was just Chantel Jennings. Um, she has narrowed down her choices to Seattle, New York. Coincidentally, the only two places that Brianna Stewart we know has interest in. Come on. And hey, where, where did Steph Dolson play college basketball? <laughs> Looks like UConn, same as Steph Dolson. <laughs> well, and, and and they played together, right? I mean, I think, and they yeah. they won a lot together, mm-hmm. and they seem yeah. to like each other a lot. So yeah. it, we'll see. I, I'm guessing Stewie <laughs> would go before Steph Dolson, but if Steph Dolson makes decision, get excited. Is all I'm saying. Dominoes, Dominoes, whoever, Stalin. Whoever gets Steph Dolson, get really excited, and also because you're getting Steph Dolson, who's one of my favorite free agents on the market. I love Steph Dolson. Yeah, I think <laughs> she she fits great. So. The the Stewie thing, yeah, extremely exciting. Um, it's mesmerizing. It's mesmerizing. Okay, look, I want to move to some coaching news. Um, okay. Let's talk uh, about Phoenix. They hired Vanessa Nygaard as their head coach. Um, did you see the ESPN article about the entire process? I did. I saw that they had narrowed it down to four, yeah. and it's like forty eight to start with. I didn't know it was that big of a pool. I thought it was like 12, 10 or 12, 48. I thought, you know, Stephanie White's name was in the mix late there. And I thought, you know, she had a chance to get back into Mm -hmm. the WNBA after coaching the Indiana Fever for years, up into the finals. And then coached at Vandy, Vanderbilt, excuse me for abbreviating, but at Vanderbilt. And then, you know, I, I just thought that would be like kind of a natural move for her, but um yeah that that was uh that was a bigger process than i thought it would be seems stressful seems super stressful for uh for the phoenix front office and um you know at the end of the day i think they got a really good coach uh, vanessa seems like someone who really knows the x's and o's we don't know exactly where her coaching style is going to be um because right. she's never been a head coach so we're right. gonna we're gonna find out um who she is and i you know she she got she got this over at least a few really quality candidates, like you're mentioning Stephanie White, uh, Nali Nakase, who is with the Agua Caliente Clippers, I heard a lot about on my podcast <laughs> with Sabrina Merchant. Um, she's, she's really interesting coaching prospect. We should keep an eye on her in the future. Okay. But Nygaard seems like a good hire. Seems like someone who wants to be in Phoenix and seems like someone who's going to be willing to deal with whatever comes after Diana Taurasi. Right. Um, retires because we, we don't know what that looks like. You know, we have no exactly. idea what that looks like. Exactly. And and I love how Vanessa Nygaard's nine-year-old son, I believe he's nine. <laughs> he said, you're the shepherd because you have to take care of the goat. And, you know, obviously talking about Diana Taurasi on that. So I don't know. That's pretty cool. You know, I love, I love when little guys are uh, 
cheering on WNBA teams. So yeah, she has to take care of respectability of that. What? Just take care of a few goats, though. Like this. Is, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's like more than one goat there. And that this off season too for Phoenix is going to be uh, interesting. Like they, I don't. I mean, they don't have much flexibility, but they kind of need to start. It's going to be tough for them to even fill out the roster. So mm-hmm. it, it'll be. Uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a re- weird road, I think, for uh, Phoenix. But when you have Tarasi and Griner and Skyler Diggins Smith, it makes it a little bit easier, huh? Exactly. I mean, you know, we're talking about you know, having a group of players yeah. that are chomping at the bit to get over the hump. And I think you have to circle Phoenix in that, right? With oh, Skylar yeah. and Brittany and Diana. But you have to be, you have to be um, cognizant of, you know, what that is going to look like after Diana Tarasi too, right? Yeah. And, and what that group looks like, so... I mean, sure, but congrats to Vanessa Nygaard. She uh, she deserves the opportunity, and we're getting that that uh, women percent percentage of women coaches in the WNBA exactly. higher and keeps going up. Yeah. Uh, speaking of of women who could be head coaches, uh, Pokey Chapman is an assistant in Seattle. Oh, no. Shelly Patterson coming to us as an assistant in, in DC. DC. Um, also, if you're wondering, uh, for DC at least, like they never filled the spot vacated by Marianne Stanley. Uh, cause Asia, Asia Jones left. So, uh, right. Shelly Patterson's in DC Chapman is in Seattle. Which of those are you more excited about? Or are you just more excited about all? <laughs> you don't have to pick oh, one. Think. I'm sorry. I, uh, first of all, I love both of them. So that's tough. Like you can't like, that's like yeah. choosing a child over another, like, no. Um, but wow. I'm just thrilled for Pokey Chapman <clears> to be back in the game. And I know her name was on the list of what I thought was 12, but was 48 (laughs) in Phoenix. And I know that she had talked to them pretty intensely. And so just to have her back, you know, and, and Noe come in and uh, just going ahead and and hiring her, Noelle Quinn, the head coach at Seattle. I love that. You know, it's like the mentor thing, Yeah, you know, Um, but with Shelly Patterson coming to DC, I mean, 20 years of WNBA yeah. coaching experience under her belt. She knows, she understands, you know, the league. She knows, like Mike Tebow said, uh, she knows the league inside and out. And that's just what it, what it takes, you know, to have that knowledge of the league, but also knowledge of, of the team you're coaching, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I think she's going to bring so much to the table in, in all ways. No, I think it's a great hire. Uh, both, both of them are a great hires just to keep, you know, we've, we've talked about this a few times, keep women's basketball knowledge in women's basketball. We lose, we lose too much of that. Um, so keeping those people in, in the WNBA is a huge deal. And I think Shelly Patterson is going to be great for DC. Yeah. Um, just getting another set of eyes in there and they, they have a heck of a coaching staff. It's, it's oh, absolutely. You got the Tebow's Mike and Eric, you got Latoya Sanders, and now you got Shelly Patterson. Um, along with the rest of the organization. So <laughs> I think it's a great hire. I think Seattle also made a great hire. Um, obviously though it depends on what players you got you got the best coach in the world if they ain't got the players they ain't going nowhere as, as uh, cheryl reeve is is very uh, fond of mentioning <laughs> she does it's easy to coach when you got the best players yes. um, speaking of the best players last year's mvp john quell jones reportedly returning to connecticut um yes. believe rachel it's a multi-year deal mm-hmm. and rachel galligan also reported that john quell is taking less then her max, which is extremely mm. interesting. And I think one of the things, and one of the things that uh, Connecticut is doing with that extra space is bringing back Courtney Williams. <laughs> like I told them to at the end of last season. How about <laughs> that? <laughs> it's crazy. How about that? Uh, I don't, I mean, this is great uh, for me from a content perspective. <laughs> what do you think of it in terms of a basketball fit? I, you know, I was surprised. Number one, I know what happened in Atlanta and everything like that. However, uh, I didn't think she would go back there. Right. I thought she would end up somewhere else. Uh, but the fact that she's back up there, oh boy, that just really, I don't know. That's just kind of, that's just like throwing one of those little poppets down on the ground. Like, you know, yeah. it's like the whole box. That's just one <laughs> of those bad boys, like the whole box. And it's like, you know. I mean, it's tantalizing when you when you think about what she was like when she was with Connecticut, mm-hmm. right? 
and and the importance of her role as an offensive threat. And I think, you know, with that key piece, obviously with John Quill Jones back, but with that key piece of Courtney Williams and her ability to rebound number one from the perimeter yeah. position, one of the best guards in the WNBA in terms of board work, but her ability to score in the mid range, like that's pretty tough and they need that. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see what that looks like now with Brianna Jones playing the way that she's mm-hmm. playing. Like they're, they're the same names, but their games have changed a bit and matured and been more competitively efficient. So I think that's going to be, that's going to be interesting to watch. Well, and you have to limit, you have to limit the amount of Courtney Williams you're getting in your life. Um, not, I mean, I, not me again, from a content perspective, she's amazing. That's I, I, I can get an unlimited amount of Courtney Williams, but from a team perspective, right. You, you do need to limit her a little bit. I think that's why she was so successful in Connecticut because yeah. she had a, a smaller role. It wasn't a, it wasn't like a, you know, a, a bit role or anything. She was a big part of that team. But she definitely had a smaller role, less usage than she had in Atlanta. I think that'll serve to make her a little bit more efficient. Not that she's ever going to be. Let's get it out of the way. She ain't never going to be efficient. Her her e-field goal is never going to be at the place that you want it to. But what this team lacked last year, I think, was just some clutch scoring. And not that Brianna uh, Brianna January, Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have that in her. It's just that's not really her game, you know, just to toss it to her and say, hey, get us a late, a late clock bucket, you know, you yeah, can do that. Yeah. It's Courtney Williams. So yes. I think that that is going to be, yeah. uh, intru- it'll be good. They just have to limit the amount of, of Courtney Williams they're getting uh, this year, but I don't think it's going to be something that's like throws a wrench into the, into the system. Um, I think, you know, in terms of a chemistry perspective, this is probably the best place for her to be. Right. Everyone knows her. Everyone, everyone's yeah. Good. Dealt with her in the uh, yeah. past, so. Absolutely. But I, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, the chemistry piece is going to be the same, but it's going to be different because yeah. these players have changed a bit. True. Right. Yeah. So I think that's going to be really something to, to look for with Connecticut. Like, you know, you look at it on paper and it's like, oh yeah. But then you look at it physically and it's totally a different story uh, with the way uh, players have, have changed their skill sets and their confidence and their strength, all of that. And their ability so i think it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how she fits right back in physically like on paper like makes sense physically let's see what that looks like with with all of the the players and and how they've evolved well and she's gonna have i mean she's coming in probably at best as a six as a six woman and i'm not even sure she's gonna you know take that spot because natisha hyman's played great since in the past couple of years I'm saying, what are you going to do? You know, they, they, they have some pieces there that could fit in in front of Courtney Williams. So it, I think it's about managing expectations to the player like that, managing her expectations, managing your expectations and dealing. And, you know, I think, I think Kurt Miller has a good grasp on how to deal with Courtney Williams. <laughs> I'll does. say that. So no, I think, it, absolutely. He knows I think it'll be good. Uh, mm-hmm. But John Quell, man, I mean, you got, you have to applaud her for taking, less than the max I, I know that's not necessarily everyone's first reaction um because everyone wants these players to get paid as much as they can but th- this whole team has sacrificed at least somewhat to get mm-hmm. this group to have a chance to win the title next season and she was the last piece of that and i think she uh she deserves applause for coming back and sacrificing a little bit for the rest of the team how about this how about john Quill jones i mean what how much less money did she take oh, we don't matches? know yet we don't no, know no. specifically no i mean Is it I significant could, i could i don't know probably i'm guessing it's not super significant so like here like a okay. list of time ta- let's let's uh i'm just using like a different an example here from the same team. okay um so Alyssa thomas uh she's getting paid two hundred six thousand dollars this year and she her the super max this season is two hundred twenty eight thousand dollars so, you know, she took less, but at the same time, Alyssa Thomas was injured last year when she signed the contract. So exactly. Yeah. I, don't know, I would say it's somewhere okay. between uh, Dewana Bonner's salary, which is 227, almost 228,000. So just a shade under the max. And then okay. some, and then probably above Alyssa Thomas's. So anywhere from 200,000 to the super max. So maybe, maybe it's 200 grand and um, it just depends. Like, I don't, you know, I got to look at uh, the, the, like we have a GM sheet. Yeah. 
the to, breakdowns to see okay. like what their cross response. But it it is going to be she's taking less, whatever it is. And why would she? And explain to to me and and <laughs> us why she would do that. Why does she need to do that? Why does uh, she need to do that? Because they they this team would be. Um, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you now. So they have about five hundred. Okay. If she took the full max, uh, they would probably not have space for Courtney Williams, depending Courtney. on what okay. depending on what Courtney Williams' other, other offers are. Mm -hmm. um, potentially, if they're bringing in Courtney at the minimum, that would be space for someone else, like Brian January or mm -hmm. you know any 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 kind of free agent at that level. That would be to bring someone like that in. So that's okay. why she would take that's what she would take a little bit less, just because they do need a little bit of room. I haven't done all the math here. I'm sure. Richard oh no, Cohen, it's okay. I'm sure Richard just... Richard Cohen's done it, and we'll find out next week. Richard Cohen. Yeah, but no, I was thinking that it was because of Courtney, but I wasn't sure like exactly. I don't think the it was just. Would do that. I don't think they would just do it for Courtney. I think it was more. Okay. It's more so like, hey, you know, it. We're trying to I'm willing. I'm willing here. to sacrifice because the rest of the team has sacrificed, and we're here to win okay. this championship. Um, and if this, if this money helps us in any way, she may be willing to do it. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know. John Paul. Hey. John Paul seems like I, I don't know if you've ever talked to John Paul. Yes. Yeah. She is the chillest person she I've is. ever talked to in basketball. She is so <laughs> like just like easygoing, just yeah. willing to answer any easy, question, easy. and like it, it's a credit to her. Uh, that she's she's willing to do it um but more so it's just like it's an indication of her personality um that being said though i think last year in the finals we talked about that personnel in the in the semi in the conference uh excuse me the semifinals semis yeah that kind of personality kind of uh hurt them a little bit i would say yeah yeah and and she is i mean she's a sweetheart yeah and you know when she played at gw they won back to back when they were in the a10 they won back to back a10 titles i mean she's from the DMV. So, I mean, just to see her evolve from Riverdale Baptist to GW to now being all of that uh, in the WNBA. I mean, her personality has, has always remained the same. Oh yeah. No, it's a, it's an island <laughs> mentality. Yeah. Yeah. But she's so, toughy. Don't, I don't get that twist. I mean, no. she's K she's KD esque. Okay. With her skill set. Um, her ability to knock in those threes and, and get to the rim and like all that at six, six, like, come on. Like no. she's legit. She's uh, legit. I was watching the, the 2019 finals. You know, I, I watch it like, I don't know, like once a <laughs> month now, like I was watching. Game oh. I was like, oh. it. just like watching John Quell battle Emma and just, yes. oh, I miss those days. That uh, was so epic. And hopefully there'll be a parade. I don't know. I mean, I'm not pushing it. I, I know, you know <sighs> COVID and all the, you know, variants. I get it. But hey, the Mystics deserve a parade for that 2019 run. I'm just going to put it out there. Say what you want. I said what I said. So I think they do too. Well, you know, what? I was going to talk about Atlanta, but we could skip over Atlanta for next. We're obviously, we're, we're DC folk. Yeah. Let's talk about DC. Um, DC. So my shine's out. I was going to come on here and talk about there a report saying that uh, she has interest from Seattle, Indiana, Minnesota, and New York, which all makes sense. Um, but, but there was an Instagram post. <laughs> Welcome to reporting, folks. I didn't Let's get this. I don't. I don't know exactly who got it. I saw it from Jack somebody. Got it. Yeah. So it was a it was a we post from Mike Shines Allen. Picture of her and Mike Tebow. Uh, with with Mike Hines Allen kind of doing the the shrug, and then it says the next one says y'all missed me, with an Aww. angel emoji. Oh, so I don't know what this means. I do. She's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> That's Chris, exactly. Christy Winter Scott, breaking emojis. news. <laughs> I know all the emojis. That's what that means. Mike Hines Allen coming back to DC. She's Mark she's the She's a restricted free agent and they love her in DC and it's hard to imagine them seeing an offer and not and matching it. Yeah. Hopefully what this means though, is they've been able to reach an agreement without her, without having to match. Um, I think that's just a little bit better for the team, the, the team player relationship. If you could say, Hey, we'll beat we'll beat their offer because we love you here so much. And you're such a big part of what they're, of what we're doing. 
And, you know, they, she is a huge part of what they do. She's a huge part of their future. So I hope this means she's coming back. Uh, and we could talk, we could just talk about her being back because, you know, the future of the mystics, right? And we'll yeah. talk about Landell Don in a second because we have some yes, we have we Landell, Landell Don news. But the future of the mystics, right, is Ariel Atkins, My Shines Allen, and the number one pick, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I mean, the smile on Mike Tebow's face <laughs> when the track lottery was up and Natasha Cloud, I don't know what the name of that dance that she did. <laughs> but that was perfect. I mean, all of DC was doing that and yeah. all of DC was smiling like Mike Tebow. I think it's going to be really interesting to see who that number one pick will be mm -hmm. for Washington. Like it has, it can't just be like the number one pick should be this person. No, mm -hmm. it's who is this person for Washington, mm -hmm. right? And it has to fit the mix of what he likes. It has to fit the mix of the players that are in place and who are coming back like Maisha Hines Allen, which I'm claiming already. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think it'll be really, it'll be really awesome, you know, to get that, um, to get that bump, right? Yeah. Clark, healthy, Della Don coming on back, Hines Allen coming on back, Cloud, come on, Ariel Atkins, let's go. Yeah. We don't know what Tina Charles is going to do, but I just like, what I see on paper, again, we're talking about on paper and the possibilities on paper are, are really exciting for DC this year because of that number one pick and players returning. Yeah, and it's hard to see. So if we're, if we're going to say my Shines Allen's coming back, which we are on this podcast, we're saying, we're saying. It's, it's extremely hard to see a way that uh, Tina Charles also comes back because there's just not, there's not enough cap space. That's just how it works, uh, especially since, Maisha had interest from other teams that probably drove up the price. So sure. I'm, I'm guessing she's close to her max, which you, uh, I mean, I don't, you know, actually, I don't know. Cause Ariel Atkins ha is getting $170,000. Um, she signed an extension though. So the extension market's a little different, but right. I'm assuming Maisha is going to be somewhere between that 170 mark and that, and then that 196 um, player max that she can get. Right. So I, I think, you know, with that in mind, it, it makes Tina Charles coming back extremely difficult. Um, so that that's just going to have to be how it is. But, you know, I think yeah. this team has to look towards the future. And like sure. I said, Mighty Shines Allen's part of that future. <laughs> Air Lacken's part of that future. And then maybe, maybe you know, maybe Natasha Cloud and, and um, depends on EDD. But this this team is set up for hopefully success this year right and then hopefully and then now if they get Heinz Allen in a long-term deal it sets them up for a nice build going forward as well yeah no doubt and I think that's what what it's all about right I think yeah. with um, head coach and GM Mike Tebow associate head coach Eric Tebow and, and now you know with Shelly Patterson on staff yeah. I, I just think they they have the guidance and and the decision making Mm -hmm. Right. And we've seen what that has meant for this organization since Mike Tebow yeah. stepped foot in the door in DC. So let's um, let's just let's keep eyes on that. All right. Let's keep an eye on on what DC is is going to look like. Is Elena Deladon healthy? Uh, everyone keeps asking about that. Um, but it was good to see her shooting in the gym. The other day, Bradley Beal uh, taking a, taking that in, you know, taking in her workout after the Wizards were nice finished look. practice. Yeah. yeah. And Delhi was, you know, she was getting some shots and recently named to that uh, USA team that's going to be working out in the D.C. area uh, next week. So, I mean, it's just good to see her moving around and going, good to see her obviously on the court and getting those those shots up and, you know, looking good. So I think that that answers all the questions. I mean, we can speculate, we can speculate, but when you actually see people in the gym, you know, and you're worried about their, their physical health and, you know, her back injury was pretty serious. So, you know, to see her back out there is really encouraging. No, it's great. And the Wizards could have used Landell Don the other night. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that 35 point game, man. I still can't believe that happened, Dave. I can't believe the Wizards gave up a 35-point lead. We're now an NBA podcast, so we won't talk about it. Yeah. We'll just but we've thought about there. it. We've thought about it. <laughs> I'm, not a Wizard. 
I'm not a Wizards fan. I just live near a lot of Wizards fans. So this is hilarious <laughs> to me. And I apologize to all of my, my, uh, the DC faithful. So oh, uh, it was a rough one. I'm a, I'm a Heat fan. Where is it? There, boom. So we're number one in the yeah. East. And we have not yeah, given up a 35 right. point lead in a game. Yeah. That being said, I wanted to, I did want to get into this uh, USA national team training camp yeah. roster. Um, I mean, all the, a lot of the names you expect to be there, but I think the biggest one, like you mentioned, is Elena Deladon. Yeah. If you recall last year, uh, she said that she was willing to go to the Olympics, but she was not, I don't think she was invited or she wasn't healthy or she, you know, she told them that she wasn't healthy. Those so both. See, seeing her be able to come in and at least work out with Team USA and try to make the team and, and try to play now in competitive basketball is an awesome sign. Yeah. Um, for all of us that that missed this amazing amazing player um and then you know i can go through some of the other names on the list actually i'll just go through all of them that are not landed sure. on we have errol atkins uh washington from the washington mystics uh free agent stephanie dolson although she's listed as chicago sky on this list we're gonna have to update that next week people uh <laughs> we have uh, alicia gray chelsea gray derica hamby natasha howard sabrina ionescu uh, Brianna Jones, Banaja Laney, Jewel Lloyd, K- uh, Kayla McBride, Andrew McCautry, Kelsey Mitchell, Kelsey Plum, Brianna Stewart, Alyssa Thomas. It's going to be a super fun uh, little tournament here that we got, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be awesome to see. And then, you know, the coaching staff. Can we talk about the coaching staff too? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cheryl Reeve, Mike Tebow, Kurt Miller. Vicky Who Johnson. else is on there? Vicky Johnson Vicky and Johnson. James Wynn. It's every, remember we talk, it's the it's the banana boat and they're and, you know, yeah, and off to the side is just a, <laughs> it's the it's the banana boat and then the what we have six there's six coaches in the WNBA that currently yeah. are not a national team. <laughs> so you guys are just like floating out in the ocean waiting for the banana boat to come around. You ever been That's on a banana boat? Say it again. You ever been on a banana boat? I have not, and I have bad nerves, and I don't do canoes well. I don't know, I don't like stepping onto things that can flip you over. No, I, thanks. I did I it like one that. time in the in the Bahamas, I think. It was not I yeah, I, no. I, I, I'm not, I was not yeah. about it. I was not about the banana boat. Yeah, I'm not I, I haven't ever done it and I'm not gonna do it. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. No. Uh but yeah, I'm I'm really excited for Steam USA. I'm excited to see what role Sabrina has too, because I think I've yeah. I've mentioned this in the past. Like she's the future, assuming her career goes the way we expect it to. She's the future of Team USA. Um, so I'm excited to see how she fits. I'm excited for Benajelina to get a shot here to uh, to show that she is she should be a part of this team because I think she should. Yeah, yeah I, I think it'll be really good to see, you know, obviously, like you said, how things shake out and and what the team looks like and what these players look like together. Mm-hmm. And again, on paper, it looks like one thing, right? And then you get them all in the gym and things start, you know, factoring in. And it's almost like the dream team from back yeah. in the day and it's like, okay, all those like really <laughs> supreme competitors in one spot. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want to say who's going to take a back seat and who's going to be an alpha, but that's what it is in oh, those yeah. kinds of, in those situations. It's like, can't have everybody be an alpha, even though they all are, because they wouldn't be at that level. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but it's, it's interesting to see how, how the roles shape up right yeah. and what that looks like after they've worked together and you know that's what it's all about just the battle your role. yeah the battle for the last the battle for the last shot between chelsea gray jewel lloyd and kelsey plum <laughs> like those three i don't think any of them have ever passed up a last shot oh why not and Me then kelsey much. kelsey and chelsea are on the same team so yeah uh, that's what i'm saying all the alphas you know somebody's gonna have to not be an alpha for a minute in that situation right I, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't last, know. Shot, I, last shot opportunity. Somebody's going to have to be like, no, you got it. And then cringe because they want it. Right. I've never <laughs> been good enough at anything to be in that position of <laughs> figuring out who the alpha oh. is or how to do it. You yeah. have though. Don't, don't sell yourself. I, you know, yeah. <laughs> you and Vicky, yeah. You and Vicky yeah. Bullet had to battle. Oh, we did. We did. Oh, well, in college, it wasn't even a question. Like that was totally her and I was fine with it. I'm like, good. Like we win. And I was happy about that. Um, yeah, but high school, AAU, sometimes, you know, some buzzer beating mm. situations. Only really one. Um, yeah, back in, in AAU, I had a kind of a buzzer beatery, but it went around slow. 
so it wasn't even dramatic it was like yeah that's dramatic okay, we'll take it and it went well it was dramatic but it wasn't like definitive yeah. it was like yeah okay <laughs> but it went in so we were like hey we won I, I would have been going crazy if I was there. Uh, it was it was exciting. It was an 8 a.m. game too, so oh. that had us up for the rest of the day. So it was good. <laughs> I got two, I got two more pieces of WNBA news. Also, just for the record, we're 40 minutes in. We're definitely definitely gonna take up a lot more of your time than we normally do on this Friday. So just hang out, just hang out. It's, yeah, it's supposed to weekend. Hopefully, you're making brunch or something. Uh, yeah. All right, in Atlanta, we have Tiffany Hayes reportedly re-signing with the Dream, as well as Nia Coffey. And Kia Stokes joining the dream in Atlanta. I like the moose. Um, depends on the contracts sure. here. I don't know. I think Nia Coffey has a ton of uh, potential. Oh, yeah. A lot last year. Um, but it'll depend on the contract to see if it's a good contract or a bad contract. But right, I, I think it's, uh, we'll see what Atlanta does. I think they're kind of in, get the people that, get people in that want to be here yeah. and also collect some assets for the future. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. We'll see how, go, uh, how, how what their rest of their plans are next week. Yeah, I, I love Nia Coffee, the lefty out of Northwestern. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she has really improved in the pros, right? She was fantastic, over two thousand points scored yeah. at Northwestern. So let's not even get that twisted. But in the WNBA, it's a different game, oh, yeah. and you know it's more physical, obviously everything. Um, but I think she has really come into her own as a pro, and and that's always fun to see. So. And then uh, Stokes, I mean, her her game, I mean, we already know about her. So yeah. I think that'll be a good mix, those two. And, and I think they'll complement one another well and, in Atlanta. And Stokes seems like a calming uh, locker room exactly. presence just from, from the coaches that um, she's had. They all say that about her. So sure. good in Atlanta to, you know, get some stability. They're obviously going to have a brand new team. But Coffee, coffee is an interesting prospect because she's she's kind of made. She's It took a while. Whoa, kicking the camera. I'm good. Yeah, no, I <laughs> uncrossed my legs. In my there was legs not a, there was not an earthquake. Everyone we're fine. <laughs> no, but uh, I think coffee. She her she shot like forty percent from three last year, so she's like made that leap from four to three, um, and mm-hmm. she also had a, another leap in terms of her defense, just coming from Northwestern. You play in that blizzard defense that's so specialized, and it's extremely difficult to learn. I think it gives you a really good base for learning all your defenses, but right learning how to play within a, nor- a more traditional scheme can be challenging for some players and she's overcome that. So coffee right. is, is going to be an interesting number. Um, but I think she's a, she's a good fit for what Atlanta's trying to do. Okay. My last piece of news though. Okay. Is weird. And I did not That's know this before I started looking for stuff. Lauren Jackson is trying to come back to professional and international basketball mm-hmm. at age 40 this is according to Matt Logie. I don't know if that's how you pronounce your last name, but oh, wow. I will find that out and correct it on the next podcast if I'm wrong. But Sandy Brondello has mentioned that Lauren Jackson could come back to the Opals and, and play for Team Australia. Hmm. 40. I mean, she could do it, I'm sure. Oh, my, I mean, I'm sure, but wow, right? That uh-huh. came out of nowhere. Yeah. I think maybe, you know, her going into the Naismith Hall of Fame may have you know brought back a lot of the the juju uh for her maybe i don't know i just did not see that coming at all uh she last played professional basketball in 2016 uh in the wmbl uh mm-hmm. and she last played in the wmba in 2012 so it's right. been a, it's been a while she's one of the greatest players to ever play the game i'm sure i'm sure she could do it um but man, that did, that did come out of nowhere. I had no idea that we were expecting a Lauren Jackson comeback. And yeah. I, I hope it happens because I, hope I it love, happens. To, love to see her, love to see her play. I love to see her and Liz Cambage play against each other, but I'm not um, sure. that would be feisty. I would like to see that too. The, yeah. Those two, those two again, a scrap. I would actually guarantee you those two again, a scrap. Right. <laughs> they probably, I mean, they, she got in a scrap with Lisa Leslie. So yeah. I'm get. I'm, I think Lauren, Lauren must've played with, played against Liz at some point maybe yeah yeah the Australian connection maybe in some national oh, they already have a feud for Mitch oh is there is there a feud there's a feud between her and I don't I don't know is that why she wants to come back she wants to come <laughs> back because Liz Cambe is like okay they have they have a little okay I didn't know about that either wow that's breaking we're breaking news all day long today 
with I this podcast. I need, to, I need to get up on my Australian news folks. <laughs> um, all right, that's all I got for the WNBA. We're, we're, we should uh, we should move on because we have like another entire podcast about college basketball to talk yes, about. Yes, yes, yes.